Hello there, what's good, what's happening? It's Karabo, so was it the uh, Karabo, yes, every so often we use the gentrified version of my name, okay, leave me alone, I'm a snob. Um, the previous part, please go uh, gauge it. Mm. I was speaking about how, it, what's the only solution to fix this country, uh, and how it is that the country has to call a fast, and the reason why they have to call a fast is because they have to bring down strong men that dwell in men and women that will never ever repent and give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ in the absence of other people intervening on their behalf. Our national government, or... Our national leaders are the tantamount of a, a severely demon-possessed um, child that you care very much about. And if you don't be the one to stand in the gap for that kid and starve yourself for that kid, they will get taken to the abyss um, in being killed by that entity because it won't let them confess the name of Jesus. It won't let them repent. You have to fast on their behalf. They are evil. They are wicked. They are literally taken by the force of Satan. There are barely any national leaders in this world that are not involved in some kind of satanic activity. You don't get to become a president of a country like South Africa unless you are a hard knock Satanist. Literally, it's just that basic. So how you rescue hard knock Satanists is you starve on their behalf. You fast on their behalf. And then they get delivered for in which their senses are restored to them and then they start to do a different thing. So the country has to basically pray and fast for not only Cyril Ramaphosa but the whole cabinet and anybody at all that is vying for a position of leadership in this country, be it municipally or um, nationally or provincially. You have got to, as a country, pray. Like, literally, I'm so unheard. It's ridiculous. Like, nobody listens to me and my videos get only like one or two views scanned, you know, like binary code. I, I work so hard to try and get this information out but literally I'm being stood on the chest of by a whole bunch to people at their own peril and sadly it is South Africans themselves that are preventing me from getting anywhere selfishly so for selfish reasons like eh, I don't want her to get married eh, she's pretty and I don't like that eh, she's eh, eh, eh. they are competing with me on a very shallow surface level when God has given me this kind of gift so I'm literally being thwarted by jealous friends and family members who are competing on career cars Homes and shoes you're wearing when the whole country is facing like an apocalypse, essentially. And they are blocking me from getting anywhere lest they should be embarrassed for being witches. The only reason why so many people that I've ever known ha are all involved in darkness is because literally it rained down from on high, from on top, from top structures. Like if, uh, you know, the, the Bible says... When a wicked man takes power, the people on the ground languish and they moan. Well, if a wicked president is voted into power by a conglomerate of, like, what is the word that I am looking for? Dumbed down, sort of kind of deceived p people on the ground. This man, or this woman, is going to bewitch the whole country. And many of his followers, South Africa, keeps on voting ANC into power. His followers will be like him. Like father, like son, like father, like daughter. And so therefore, our country, the policies of the nation as well, will pontificate the agenda of the dad. So our traditional leaders and sangomas and whatnot are important parts of the South African decision-making process parliamentarily. That's literally what's going on. So there's a lot of ancestral worship on the ground, lots and lots of witchcraft, and lots and lots of South Africans subscribe to it. I, in my own lifetime, have seen such a ramp up of witchcraft and uh, such a ramp up of people sub suddenly, all of a random, subscribing to ancestral worship and Amadozi and whatnot when historically they were not about their business. Like they were just neutral, kind of like irreligious. And then they went from that to super all about Impepo, all about. What is the stuff that they do? Oh, and what have you. They, 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 they went from kind of and spiritual to spiritual in that regard and it's so many of them literally in my own life it's almost everybody uh so many of them that the country essentially now has a different religion on on the surface it looks christian but low-key and underground and really at the core at the heart the country is a pagan nation that worships ancestral worship demons uh essentially it's a witchcraft religion and the country is therefore suffocating under the worship of baal in that regard meaning that this nation will ultimately be under judgment from God for being so pagan. God does not just allow pagan countries to roll around on the mud, especially when they profess Christianity, and especially when, because they profess Christianity, they keep on persecuting the true Christians on the ground. Uh, my message is becoming increasingly unpopular in a way that never used to be the case in a country that used to subscribe to Jesus, to, to Christianity. Uh, and because my message has become so unpopular, people like me are being persecuted. So if you are living in a land that keeps on stoning the prophets of God or the true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you are a country on that day that is going to be under severe judgment, especially if you call yourself Christian. South Africa is very polytheistic in the sense that it worships, I guess, again, many gods within the whole religion of ancestral worship. They impl is implied by mere virtue of belonging to that religion 
a polytheism because there are more than one ancestors. All of your dead relatives become your gods. And then over and above that, those gods, they then also worship Jesus. So it's just this mess that of poly theistic clamor that God Almighty is calling South Africans on the ground to repent from and if they don't repent from it especially because they subscribe to him um, in the midst of all of this other idol worship he is going to knock them to the ground worse even than he can ever do in a country like China why because South Africa is like Sardis they have a reputation for being alive even though they're dead they're like Laodicea they are neither cold nor, nor uh, hot but they are lukewarm and so God is going to spit them out of his mouth. God is especially harsh to countries that subscribe to him, however, mix him with many other things, which is why um, he has so softly judged countries that are most largely sort of kind of one religion like Hinduism in India or Islam in Iran or communism and atheism in China, right? He has been less harsh in those lands than he has been and then he has proven to be historically in lands that are sub supposed to be his, but that have turned their face away from him. And the first such people to be uh, subjugated to that wrath from God were the Jews themselves. They turned over to other gods while still calling him God. And they praised him with their lips and their hearts were far from him. And so his wrath on them was anti-Semitism. And we all know how bad it still is on the earth. Well, countries that are like that, that have got Jesus and they mix him with all different kinds of other things are under an exorbitant amount of judgment from God. You can just see it from looking on look at haiti look at um brazil look at the slums they're in like literally countries that are supposed to be gods go brazil currently that massive jesus statue in rio de janeiro uh there was once upon a time where somebody put a banner over it i don't know whether or not it was on the actual statue or on a mock-up created in the computer that said uh he approves abortion like a country like that is under judgment literally they will never ever come out of darkness they will never come out of squalor poverty and all the things that they are subjugated under because of having a double standard uh you know double mindedness against uh the god that they claim to subscribe to uh, not only is 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 brazil you know mixing like all different kinds of occult pagan practices uh i believe santeria is quite hard not there right with with christianity but they also are massive on pushing the catholic doctrine which is the be all and end all of most idolatrous religion within Christendom in that it mixes Mary worship and worship of saints with Jesus. Like countries like those are going to fall under the most incredibly handsome and violent wrath of God. And they are going to find themselves worse off even than countries that are very religiously extreme for a religion that is not Christianity. Like, you know, what do you call this place? Like like Iran, like uh, the United Arab em Emirates and what have you. They've never claimed to like Jesus and so they tend to kind of still be left alone. Iran might be very tumultuous with a whole bunch of war. Um, but if you just look at the UAE, uh, but the only, uh, however, however, albeit Iran having all of these uh, issues, the reason why they're under so much judgment is because they have been quite afflicting literally from the beginning of time uh, of the Jews. That's why they're under so much judgment. That's why their country is going through so much. Um, however, if Iran was like China, where they don't necessarily have a bad rap with China, no, not with China, with Israel, if they have not had such a bad rap with Israel, they would likely be as prosperous as China. Because God judges nations that are idolatrous but not nearly as badly as he judges nations that are within their idolatry mixing him with other gods only look at the uae dubai look how beautiful it is over there you just need to look at these trends across the world and recognize how god judges how he handles nations how he brings them uh to their knees okay um you know, what is this and again the, the wealth and the prosperity and the incredible like grandiosity and splendor of the united states which is currently being ripped away at the seams because of again that idol worship uh is because of the fact that there has historically been a majority Christian land that has stayed true to God and has to this day maintained itself as one of the grandest exporter of the gospel on the earth but they are losing their cool and their street cred and for those reasons all that swagger that's flying out the window is causing God to judge them and so now they're starting to look you know low-key like an impending Babylon can't say that enough all right so this country if at all it wants to be restored to the glory that it came up well, as i was a very happy kid a very happy south african i loved my country i was very patriotic but now i can't stand it i want to leave and this is because god is judging it south africa was on the come up it was an emerging market as soon as it repented from the sins of a bad date god was giving it obvious prosperity we got given we were the first african country to win the to win the world cup bid do you understand? And during Philippi who came and left, we had so much prosperity in the country during that time and there was so much peace during that time. God had obviously blessed us. But now, now we're falling apart. Do you know why? 
because the citizens on the ground have increasingly become dark. They have increasingly become satanic, polarized in against Christianity. They are becoming increasingly hostile to the church, um, albeit still subscribing to Christianity because they're not quite brazen and bravadoed enough to abandon Christ altogether. But if you ab- if, if you subscribe to Jesus and you speak about how it is that he's the only way, they get angry, they get mad at you. So when you are monotheistic, when you are Jesus Christ onlyist in this country, you are becoming you are increasingly rare and increasingly persecuted by people who subscribe to Jesus, like I'll take him, but please, he understands my ancestors too. Like that is what's going on in this country. True Christians that are only Jesus in this country are becoming increasingly ostracized and afflicted by those who also hold to ancestral worship. And we are decreasing in number, both in the masses of us that are coming to Christ and also the uh, the success of evangelism to Christianity as the only way to eternal life. Not just Christianity, not Christianity, but Christ. But, you know, that is a religion that we call Christianity uh, type establishment thing. So we are less successful at evangelism, successful. And I'm speaking successful evangelism. In other words, you get a person to abandon idol worship and only stick with Jesus. We are becoming less successful at evangelism. And those of us who are one of Jesus Christ onlyists, those of us who are truly saved are becoming increasingly persecuted and are becoming increasingly hostaged, like literally hostage takers captured, captured, we are becoming increasingly persecuted. And with that ramping up, understand that the judgment of God is right at the door, knocking frantically, saying in the absence of repenting, I'm not going to stay in my hand. And that's why I want to get out. I want to get out because I've already been suffering for so long that I don't want to now be in a country endured under civil war. The country is worshipping the devil just like its fathers have worshipped the devil. The country is groaning, lamenting, mourning on the ground because its dad is a Satanist. Our president have stopped being godly. Next part.